y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It is Thursday night, and I think it's around, I don't even know what time it is, probably about 7.30 or 7.45, but I wanted to do our Bible study a little early tonight, and that way I can go put on my gown. This is my dessert, my latte, you know, that I make, and it's so good. But I wanted to come on here and say hey and do our Bible study a little early so, so that I could go get ready for bed. Not that I'm going to bed, but you know what I mean. I want to get comfortable. Chris was listening to a program and it was really loud. And so I walked in there and I said, Chris, what are you listening to? And he went, oh, well, and he started to explain it to me. And I smiled and I said, I'm really not interested in it. It's just really loud. Can you turn it down before we do our Bible study? And he said, yes. I thought that was funny. I had a migraine again today. It's just that time of the month, I guess, for me. I always get them at least once a month. I do not have a cycle anymore, but I still have my migraines. It's the craziest thing. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about... The crossing of the Red Sea and manna tonight. And um, the crossing of the Red Sea. So, it's kind of amazing to hear these people grumble and stuff like they did. I'll take my hair down. That would help my headache, wouldn't it? Um, it's kind of amazing that people would fuss so much. But, if it were us, we'd probably do the same thing. And i tell you why. He brought them out of Egypt. Well, when they're coming out of Egypt, they turn around and look. And here comes the Pharaoh and his chariots. And they were much bigger and more massive than these people. So they thought they were dead. They thought they were going to die. And so they started, oh, my Lord, you know, what are we going to do? I'm paraphrasing. And so God told Moses that he had heard their cries and that he could put his hand out over the waters and the waters would part and let the people cross. And so they did. And I'm sure they were astonished and probably quite overwhelmed and shocked at the same time. But they got to cross the Red Sea. And as they're crossing the Red Sea, the uh, Pharaoh and his army is following them. When they got to the other side, God said, put your rod back over the waters. And he drowned all the people that were chasing them in the waters. God did. So when they get, when that happens, everybody's so happy and they're so full of joy that they sing. And there's a chapter of a song. Where the, it's called the Song of Moses. And then in the next chapter, one of the ladies sings Miriam with timbrels. And she dances and she sings to the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. So they are all so very happy and thrilled and full of joy. Enough that they're praising the Lord and singing and dancing. And I'm sure they were just having a time. And um, so we got to see the Song of Moses. The part that I'll read um, from the Song of Moses. Let's see. Um, it says, by the great, okay, it says, uh, they will, uh, he's talking about all the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them by the greatness of your arm. They will be as still as a stone till your people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over whom you have purchased. So he's saying that, that uh, God has purchased them. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. 
that makes me think a little bit about Jesus telling us that he's going to prepare a place for us. And we know that's not made with hands, but God's hands in heaven. And just like he's prepared them a place here and they're singing about it. So they're really happy and on high. So they get out past there and they've been out in the wilderness. I think it said 14 days. Now, 14 days, the first thing that happened is they are out there quite a few days and they get thirsty and God provides them a way to have water. Then they get hungry and then they start thinking about the foods that they miss and they start mumbling and grumbling and fussing. And you think that you wouldn't do it, but really and truly, if you're out there trekking and going through the wilderness and you're hungry, you'd probably fuss too. Because don't we get don't we get a little fussy when we get hungry? Could you imagine being really hungry? And so God tells them that he's going to provide the meat during the day. I mean, meat in the, at twilight, which is evening, and manna in the morning. So God supplies them manna. And it says that when the dew lifted, it was like flakes along the ground. And then they were sweet like honey wafers. And they were to gather just enough that they, that, what they needed, not more. And they weren't supposed to keep any more till the next day. And of course, some didn't obey. And they got up the next day and it smelled like worms and it was bad. Then he tells them that he's not just going to do that. He's going to give them a day of rest. And it says in here that Pharaoh never gave them a day of rest. So they were supposed to gather twice as much on day six and bake it and boil it so that it would be ready for the next day. And uh, that's what they did. And it's pretty wild that God made it, the manna so that it would be like worms the next day, except on the seventh day, he made it so that it was fine and good to eat. Um, I was just thinking, I shouldn't say this, but this is what I was just thinking. He laid those wafers out on the ground for them. And they picked it up and they ate it off of the ground. Now, it was straight from God, but still. And people fuss at me about the goofiest things in my kitchen. I guess if they had been walking in the wilderness and God told them to pick up a wafer off the ground, they would have been, they would have mumbled too, some of those people. <laughs> it just made me think of that. I would eat it up in a minute because that's how I am. Um... But anyway, he provided for them. He provided them food, and he provided them meat. And so they had uh, plenty to eat and plenty to keep them satisfied, okay? So um, he also, we're going to stop at the end of chapter 16 after we talk about the manna. But I wanted to tell you that the manna... Um, was um, he also told them that he wanted them to save some so that their children could actually see the manna that he had provided for them while they were in the wilderness. So Moses got a jar and he put some in it. And um, it says, let's see, I'm going to read that part to you. It says, and the house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like white coriander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Then Moses said, This is the thing with the Lord which the Lord has commanded, fill an omer with it, and be kept to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So Moses told Aaron to take a pot and put an omer of manna in it, lay it up before the Lord and so that it would be kept for their generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years. 
until they came to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is one-tenth of an ephath. Ephath. And I didn't look that up to see how much that was. But it was enough to fill them up. That's all that matters. They were supposed to get an omer per person that, that was in their household. So, um, now this was not bread already made, this manna. It was like seed. So, it was something that they actually did have to gather up and prepare, okay? Um, so, it wasn't just like they could go out there and eat bread. It was something that that was provided for them. The cool thing about it is it says in here is that it was provided for them without them having to work for it which had ne nothing like that had ever happened, it says in here, except for Adam and Eve in the garden, back before the fall when men didn't have to work for their food. God just provided it for them. So when these people were in the wilderness, God made provisions for them, and he provided food for them, and they didn't have to work for it. But it was so hard for these people to see and love him, and trust him, and follow his commandments, that they stayed in the wilderness for 40 years, and they never got to go into the land of Canaan, because of their uh, rebellious ways, and their attitudes, and the, it was just terrible, and um, so we will, we will, um, we like to say we would never do that, Oh, I would never be that way. Oh, I would never do that. I would believe the Lord. If he if he parted the Red Sea for me, I would never forget. But you don't know what you would do until you're in a situation. So it's real it's real easy to judge other people um, when it's not ourselves. So we really don't know what we would have been like. Probably just like them. Probably wouldn't have been a whole lot different. Uh, it's easier for us now because... We're saved, and we have the Holy Spirit living in us, and he helps convict us. But remember, these people didn't have that. They didn't have that at all. So they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had God, but they still didn't have God in them. So it was a lot harder for them to follow commandments and do things. Um, and we're going to figure that out as we go through the Old Testament. Now, um... For those of y'all who don't normally see the Bible study, we are just starting at the front of the book and going to the back. And it may take us years together because I don't get in no hurry and I don't get on here every night. But we're going through it together. And I hope that it helps piece things together for you. I've already got a good picture of it. I mean, we've already seen a lot happen. And now I kind of know more about why the people were in Egypt to start with to even have to be... Um, taken out of Egypt by Moses, uh, thanks to those boys selling their brother who wound up with the Pharaoh. That's how everybody got there. But if they hadn't got there, then they would have starved to death during the famine. So, I mean, it helps us put it in perspective and helps us uh, put things in order. It's just, it's just a nice little way to look at it, okay? Um, I hope that y'all are enjoying the Bible study. Tomorrow, let's say tomorrow's Friday. Friday. Uh, excuse me. I have an oncologist appointment tomorrow, and I'm going to cook a good bit tomorrow. Um, so if I feel like it, I'm going to come on here with y'all. Um, the only reason I'm going to the oncologist is because I haven't been in, in two years. I didn't realize it, but I have been having a little bit of back pain and stuff, and I thought, you know, wouldn't hurt for me to have a scan or something before I run off to um, St. Mary's. And um, so I called them and they were like, you haven't even been here in two years. And I said, really? And uh, apparently I canceled my appointments and then I forgot that I canceled the appointments and never made them again. Go figure. Anyway, so I'm going there tomorrow and have my blood drawn and my tumor markers checked and all that, which I should have had done a long time ago. And um, then I'm coming back and I'm going to cook. And I'm going to try to get a lot of cooking done because me and Chris are going to try to go fishing uh, Monday next week, I hope. We might. Or either Monday, just Monday. May gets to come home on Tuesday, I hope. Y'all are playing a good Thanksgiving. I still don't have anything planned. I need to call my daddy and 
a couple of other people and, and plan some stuff. But anyway, um, tomorrow, if I'm on here, we'll talk about Water from the Rock, Jethro's Advice, Israel at Mount Sinai, and um, I'm not going to go to the Ten Commandments. So we'll stop before the Ten Commandments. So we'll go through 17, 18, and 19 the next time we get together. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and say our prayers. I have been reading your comments. I don't always respond quickly, but I do read them. We do have quite a few ladies uh, that are watching and their husbands um, that are going through treatments for things, um, have a lot of medical problems, and so we need to keep each other in our prayers. Um, I'm sure that the doctor's office will be fine tomorrow, y'all. It's just my normal thing. It's nothing big. Um, if she decides to do an and a scan, I'm not even worried about that at this point. Um, I'm not going to worry unless I have a reason to worry. Let's say that. Um, but let's, plus I haven't lost any weight. Most of the time when you have cancer for real, you lose some weight. You might think you're doing really good, but in fact, you're sick and you don't know it. Because that's what happened to me. I had lost about 15 pounds when I figured out that I had cancer and I just thought it was because I'd been eating better and I would I was eating every day I was eating a granola bar in the morning and a yogurt at 10 and I was working then and I just thought I was just doing great and come to find out I had cancer go figure but most of the time you drop some weight and I ain't dropped pounds so I ain't too worried about it you know All right, we're going to say our prayers, and um, I hope y'all got to see my broccoli casserole today. We ate that for lunch, and it was so good. Mm-mm-mm, good. So you could throw some chicken in that and have a meal in itself. Of course, you wouldn't even have to. It's got protein in it because of the cheese. You could just have a meal on it. Um, that was a ding. I don't know what that was for. So anyway, I think it's probably Missy Patty, my my my. My little girlfriend, Missy Patty, sells my paparazzi jewelry in Alabama. And I like to watch her live, I ain't gonna lie. And I do buy a good bit of it. It's $5 a pop. But I enjoy it. It's fun. And um, I just love to hear her talk. She sounds just like me. And I just love it. It sounds like she could be my cousin or something, you know. Well, let's say our prayers. I love each and every one of y'all. And um, so good to see all of y'all on here. And I recognize a bunch of names tonight. It makes me happy. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for the beautiful day we had here in Georgia. And we thank you for the bad weather we may have had somewhere else. And we thank you just because you're God. We thank you because you love us and because you provide for us. And you make provisions for us that we don't even see. Just like these people in the wilderness did. Not see. I'm sure there's things in our life that we do not see that you do for us. May we forgive our, may we forgive um, those who have anything against us and may you forgive us for anything that we may think that is not in your will. Um, because I'm sure there's plenty of us that because we're in our flesh that do things that we shouldn't do or say things we shouldn't say and even think things that we shouldn't think. And we just praise you because you provided a lamb for us that, and you have forgiven us for all of our sin, the sin in the past, the sin of today, and the sin of tomorrow. And we just thank you for that. Um, and we do know, Lord, that even if you have forgiven us for our sin, you will judge us one day. And on that throne, you will do at the, uh, on that great throne of judgment, you will judge us for our works on whether or not we were good witnesses for, your, for you and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So may we remember that as we go throughout our days, Lord, and remember to share your word and your love with other people. Um, help us to be bold and not be ashamed. And help us know that it wouldn't be us. It would be you working through us so that we will not have fear in sharing your gospel. Be with us as we go throughout tonight. Be with our families and be with each and every one that wants to be a part of this Bible study. That wants to love you more. Get to know more about you. 
and um, help others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, I hope y'all have a good night. And um, I hope that we can remember the provisions or think about some of the things that God does for us that sometimes we do take for granted like the people in the wilderness and some of us live in the wilderness. I think I might talk about that next time. I think I'm going to look that up, old study that me and Chris did and talk about the next time because we don't want to be stuck in the wilderness like the people um, that were freed out of Egypt. And so many Christians are. They wander around in the wilderness and they never get to live the abundant life. And lots of times it's just because they don't know any better. Um, so we need to try to uh, make sure that we know how to live an abundant life. And so I might look that up. I think that'd be good for us. Y'all have a good night. And thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it. Bye. Love ya.